So, just to clear something up straight away, this isn't exactly a normal archetype analysis. It's far from it. You see, back in my 2019 update video, I said I'd be doing a video on the Sina Dragons, what I thought of them. And I intend to, I mean, you're watching it, aren't you? However, I also wanted to cover all the other monsters in the same series as them, such as the XL Synchros, the Ultimate Sina Dragons, and all that good stuff. Because of the format this video is in, I don't strictly have to stick to a certain archetype, more like I'm going to be looking at a series of cards. However, because there is a lot of cards in this series, I'm going to be splitting this video into three parts. The first part will cover the Sina Dragons, the second part will cover the Dual Dragons from the manga, and the third series will cover all of the more powerful dragons, like the Acel Synchros and the Majestic Archetype. Now, this isn't strictly a review. I'm not going to take a completely objective viewpoint for these cards. You'll hear a lot of my own thoughts, including how much I like the card, or what it did in the anime, stuff like that. So don't take this as a competitive analysis, you should know I don't do those anywhere. With all that covered, let's begin the breakdown of the Sina Dragons. So, first off, what are the Sina Dragons? They were the ace monsters of the Sinas from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, those Sinas being Yusei, Jack, Akiza, Crow, Luna, and Leo. At least by the end of the series. Each of them had their own Sina Dragon, even though Crow got his a lot later than the rest of them, and Leo's dragon appeared almost at the very end of the entire show. I can't be asked explaining the full anime backstory of these creatures, so just go watch 5Ds if you want to see that. Anyways, the first category of monsters we'll be covering is the standard Sina Dragons, those being Stardust Dragon, Red Dragon Archfiend, Black Rose Dragon, Ancient Fury Dragon, Black Wing Dragon, and Life Stream Dragon, with Power Tool Dragon also being thrown into that mix. They're all Synchro monsters, seeing as Synchro was the whole theme of 5Ds, and in this lineup we've had some pretty remarkable beasts. So, let's get straight into it. So, seeing as we're looking at the Sina Dragons, what better beast to start with than the ace monster of Yusei Fudo himself, the one, the only, apart from that fake copy Paradox made, Stardust Dragon. This guy is pretty much the flagship monster of 5Ds, and honestly, it's a really fitting beast. It's a level 8 Wind Dragon Synchro monster with 2500 attack, 2000 defense, and the following effect. During either player's turn, when a card or effect is activated that will destroy a card or cards on the field, you contribute this card, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. During the end phase, if this effect was activated this turn and wasn't negated, you can special summon this card from your graveyard. Well, that's quite a step up from protagonist ace monsters in the past. This was, and still is, a pretty good effect, able to negate any destruction effect such as Raigeki or MST, and being able to special summon itself back makes the card that much more better. It has the standard protagonist ace monster attack points, it has an easy summoning condition thanks to it being generic, and it now has a bunch of support cards to let you summon him more easily, including Converging Wishes which turns him into potentially the most powerful monster your opponent will ever have seen. I love this card, it looks awesome, it's still a pretty good card today, it has some awesome evolved forms and it's my favourite ace monster of all the protagonists. Now, because every Yu-Gi-Oh protagonist needs a rival with a 3000 attack point monster, we have Red Dragon Archfiend, the ace monster of Jack Atlas. If you're wondering why this card is also a part of the Archfiend archetype, it's because the name Red Demon's Dragon was apparently too scary for four kids. Apparently, many things were just too insane for four kids to handle. Anyways, Red Dragon Archfiend is also a level 8 dragon synchro monster with a generic summoning condition, except this time it is 3000 attack, 2500 defense, a dark attribute, and the following effect. After damage calculation, if this card attacks a defense position monster your opponent controls, destroy all defense position monsters your opponent controls. During your end phase, destroy all other monsters you control that did not declare an attack this turn. This card must be face up on the field to activate and resolve this effect. This pretty much shows the contrast between Stardust Dragon and Red Dragon Archfiend pretty concisely. Stardust is more focused on passiveness and defense, whereas Red Dragon Archfiend is all about total destruction and offense. As for the effect, it's pretty good. If you have another monster alongside Red Dragon Archfiend and your opponent has a field stack with defense mode monsters, you're going to wipe out all of your opponent's monsters and clear the way for your direct attack. However, Red Dragon Archfiend doesn't hang out with wimps, so if you don't attack, he's taking you out at the end of your turn. I'm not sure why it decides to wipe out all of your monsters that don't attack, but hey, that just hammers home the focus on aggression. Red Dragon Archfiend is also a really cool monster, and while I do like Stardust Dragon more, a lot more has come out of Red Dragon Archfiend. It's got a whole archetype, a pretty sick retrain, and even more evolved forms than Stardust does. It's probably the Sina Dragon that has received the most love over the years, and honestly, I can see why. Coming up next is the Sina Dragon of the best damn female main character in all of Yu-Gi-Oh, Akiza Rosinski. Or Akiazawi even though there's really not much to competition for the title of best girl in Yu-Gi-Oh, so you know. Consolation prizes, I guess. Black Rose Dragon is a level 7 Fire Dragon Synchro Monster with a generic summoning condition, 2400 attack, 1800 defense, and this effect. 
When this card is Synchro Summoned, you can destroy all cards on the field. Once per turn, you can banish one plant-type monster from your graveyard, then target one defense position monster your opponent controls. Change that target to face-up attack position, and if you do, its attack becomes zero until the end of the turn. So, this is a really nice effect, even though I've literally never used the second effect in my entire whole history of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! The first part of the effect is just a quick and easy field nuke, effectively resetting the field, even though Black Rose Dragon itself is destroyed. However, if you use something like Clear Effector, Black Rose Dragon will stay on the field, letting you attack directly for 2400 damage after you have destroyed your opponent's entire board. It only works when Black Rose is Synchro Summoned, so you can't just revive it in order to destroy everything, but it's still a very nice effect. Anyways, the second effect is alright, letting you effectively deal a guaranteed 2400 damage to your opponent, even though it won't work on links, and with targeting protection, it's just lost a lot of its usefulness. If it negated effects, it would be really good, but hey, we can't have everything in a monster from the 5Ds era. Recently, in Duelist Pack Girl Power, Black Rose Dragon got more support, but I haven't had a chance to playtest them. However, by just looking at it, it seems like Black Rose Dragon is easier to Synchro Summon now, meaning that cards will be nuked more than ever before. Black Rose Dragon is a real contender for what I would call the best sign of Dragon, with Stardust Dragon being its only possible contender, alongside our next Dragon, and it's an awesome card to use. It can turn entire duels around, and it looks really pretty for a Dragon based on a flower. I never thought I'd say that sentence in my life, but hey, stranger things have happened. Next up is Ancient Fury Dragon, the ace monster of Luna, even though she only summoned it in one duel during Season 1, which as we all know is the best season of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. Episode 1 to Episode 64, it's the best part of all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Mark my words. Anyways, back to the dragon. It's a level 7 light fairy with generic summoning conditions, 2100 attack, 3000 defense, and this effect. Once per turn, you can special summon one level 4 or lower monster from your hand. You cannot conduct your battle phase the turn you activate this effect. Once per turn, you can destroy as many field spells on the field as possible, and if you do, gain 1,000 life points. Then you can add one field spell from your deck to your hand. So, perhaps I was wrong about Stardust and Black Rose being the best Sino Dragons, seeing as good old Ancient Fairy Dragon is so powerful it got banned. Yep, you can't play it, it's gone. Goddamn Chaos Emperor Dragon is apparently more fair than this thing. But hey, let's look at the effects. Special summoning level 4 or lower monsters from your hand once per turn for free is always a great effect, seeing as it can give you resources for synchros, or, nowadays, it can give you resources for links. And if you summon a level 1 tuner, you've got a crystal wing. The second effect is also really good nowadays, seeing as everyone and their mother, and their grandmother, and their grandmother's pet gerbil, all of them need field spells in order to pull off broken boards nowadays. And this thing acts as a terraforming with legs, plus you gain a thousand life points and blow up your opponent's field spell. If you blow up your own field spell, you can just grab another one from your deck, so that's deck thinning, and you can use the soft ones per turn effects twice. While I may personally not care about Ancient Fairy Dragon that much, in today's Yu-Gi-Oh, there's no denying its versatility. Or at least before Konami brought down the Banhammer. And here we have the Sino Dragon that came out of fucking nowhere. I say this because back in Season 1, the 5 Sino Dragons that were shown were Lifestream Dragon and the 4 that I've covered already. Also, random trivia, Crow was planned to be the main villain of the Dark Sinus arc. However, people decided that Crow was really cool with his carrot hair, so they decided to make him the 5th Signer instead of our boy Leo, and therefore Lifestream Dragon was just kinda of forgotten about until later in the video when we'll discuss him. Anyways, you can't be part of Team 5 Dragons without a dragon, and so, Crow got a dragon. Blight Wing Dragon. Funnily enough, it wasn't even his dragon in the first place, it was his dead friend's dragon which was given to him. Modestiny, I suppose. And Black Wing Dragon, just for all intents and purposes, is not part of the Black Wing archetype. Just clearing that up. Anyways, it's another level 8 dra Dark Dragon, this time with 2800 attack points, 1600 defense, a generic summoning condition, and this effect. If you would take damage from a card effect, place one Black Feather counter on this card instead. This card loses 700 attack for each Black Feather counter on it. Once per turn, you can remove all Black Feather counters from this card, then target one face up monster your opponent controls. That at target loses 700 attack for each Black Feather counter you removed. And if it does, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the amount of attack lost by this effect. Well, this is certainly an effect. Back in 5Ds, everyone and their grandmother was running burn cards, so this card might have been more relevant back in the anime. But still, losing 700 attack points in order to block sparks isn't exactly worth it. The second effect seems to be tolerable, seeing as you can potentially make your opponent take 2800 damage if they control a powerful enough monster, but your Black Winged Dragon is going to likely be destroyed because it lacks a protection ability, and 2100 attack isn't that formidable nowadays, and that's only with one counter. Just by blocking something like Sparks or Poison of the Old Man, your Black Winged Dragon goes from being a genuinely powerful monster to being able to be destroyed by Shape Snatch with limiter removal. The design is really cool at least, so it's not awful, it's just not that great compared to what we've seen so far. 
Now, remember what I said about Lightstream Dragon a while ago? Well, one day, Lightstream Dragon went down to the local Mitre 10, got kitted out for some DIY, and became Power Tool Dragon. Don't ask me how or why, it just happened. Anyways, Power Tool Dragon is a level 7 machine with 2300 attack, 2500 defense, a generic summoning condition, and this effect. Once per turn, you can reveal 3 equipped spells from your deck, then your opponent randomly adds one of them to your hand, and then you shuffle the rest back into your deck. If this card will be destroyed while equipped with an equipped spell card, you can send one of those cards to the graveyard instead. This is the biggest variation to a signer dragon that we've seen so far, and it's honestly not that bad of a card. The equip searching can let you add some useful cards from your deck to your hand like power tool C and D, and the protection effect is potentially good, seeing as it works when the card will be destroyed by any means. I wouldn't say it's as good as the signer dragons we've judged so far, not including black wing dragon, but it can be useful in any deck that focuses around equips, such as certain morphtronic builds or in Vylons. However, Power Tool Dragon is just the downgraded form of the actual Signer Beast, Livestream Dragon. The late 5D's ass puller, which is actually set up early in the anime, but didn't appear for at least another 100 episodes. Don't ask me why, it's convoluted. Anyways, it's the Signer Dragon of Leo, the secret 6th Signer, and it's the level 8 Earth Dragon Synchro Tuna that requires Power Tool Dragon and a Tuna Moss in order to be summoned, so it's automatically more convoluted to play than the other dragons so far. It's got 2900 attack, 2400 defense, and this effect. When this card is Synchro Summoned, you can make your life points become 4000. You take no effect damage. If this face-up card on the field will be destroyed, you can banish one equip spell from your graveyard instead. Well, this is certainly a card. The life point restoration seems like it might come in handy once every 13 games. The effect damage negation is really just more 5D's crap, but it's actually not too bad in today's game considering Trick Stars. And the protection is just a little bit better than Power Tool Dragon, but it's still not amazing. It's hard to say whether Livestream is better than Power Tool or not, seeing as all it really offers is a bigger body and some burn protection, whereas Power Tool can increase its points via Eclipse, and it can search for them by itself, adding to the consistency of whatever deck you're playing. In the anime, it had a fantastic effect, that being it could modulate the levels of all other Synchro monsters on the field, which is how Yusei's first summon Quasar, and it would make a Cell Synchroing way easier in the actual game. That, you know, without links being a thing. However, that effect was not kept in the real card, and as such, all potential usefulness it had is now gone. The only real upside I see to it is that it's the most powerful monster you can summon with Needle Fiber, so if you want some attack points and burn protection, he's your guy. It's not the worst card in the world, but it's not really that good. So, in summary, the Sign of Dragons, or at least this initial roster, are a pretty great bunch of cards. They've got varied effects, varying levels of usefulness, and apart from maybe Lifestream and Black Wing Dragon, none of them can really be considered bad. These are my favourite series of monsters in the entire game, not including the Egyptian gods, and I'd really like for all of them to receive additional support at some point in the future. Red Dragon Archfiend got two archetypes centred around it, and Black Rose just got some new support. All we need now is some proper support for Stardust, maybe a way to make Lifestream Dragon less useless, and maybe even give Black Wing Dragon some love that extends beyond a single trap card. I'll now list off the order in which I like these Sina Dragons and sum up why very quickly. Keep in mind that it's based off the dragons themselves and occasionally bringing in spells and traps that directly support these dragons, not their evolved forms. I'll get onto those in another video. Number 7, Lifestream Dragon. Compared to the versatility its anime effect could have provided, this guy with its random mishmash of effects is generally unimpressive. 6, Blackwing Dragon. This card came out of nowhere and its effect is pretty average. If it had tied in with the Blackwing archetype, maybe it could have been better, but for now, it's a criminally average card with some nice artwork. Number 5, Power Tool Dragon. This guy offers some handy utility for equip based decks, but the problem is I never use those. However, I can still see the usefulness, so I'm willing to cut it some slack. Number 4, Ancient Fairy Dragon. Never cared much for Luna, but at least her dragon is pretty sick. The effects are so good that the card got banned, and it's pretty for a dragon. Those ears are odd though. Number 3, Red Dragon Archfiend. If we were taking into account the entire lineup of Red Dragon Archfiend monsters, this placement would be pretty high. But judging the original monster itself, it just lands in number 3. Number 2, Black Rose Dragon. This surprisingly beautiful dragon is a super easy nuke effect, and that's nearly always guaranteed to win points in my book. Number 1, Stardust Dragon. How can you not love Stardust? It's the main monster of 5Ds, it's awesome, its effect is good, and it can reach over 30,000 attack with converging wishes. What more can you ask for? Now, that normally would have been the end of the video, but there's one more monster I want to have a look at. This card is based off the Crimson Dragon, basically a god in 5Ds, and it's honestly pretty bad nowadays. Take note of my phrasing. The monster in question is the Synchro Monster, Ultimaya Zulkin. It's a dark dragon with no stars, but it's always treated as a level 12 monster. It's got no stats, and the effect reads, This card's original level is always treated as 12. Cannot be Synchro Summoned. Must be special summoned from your extra deck by sending two level 5 or higher monsters you control with the same level to the graveyard, one tuner and one non-tuner, and cannot be special summoned by other ways. Once per turn, when a spell or trap card is set on your side of the field, 
except during the damage step, you can special summon one power tool dragon synchro monster or one level 7 or 8 dragon synchro monster from your extra deck. Cannot be targeted for attacks or by card effects while you control another synchro monster. Remember how I said this card is bad nowadays? That's because Master Rule 4 slaughtered this card. Back in the day, you could use this guy to bring out any of the Sino Dragons, in addition to cards like Beals, Void Ogre, and even the mighty Crystal Wing. It's not treated as a Synchro Summon, so Stardust can't revive it with its effect, and Black Rose won't get its effect off, but honestly, there are other monsters to summon compared to those, like the aforementioned Crystal Wing. Back in the day, this card was great, especially in things like Cyber Dragons or Synchrons, but nowadays, it's honestly pretty bad. The card uses its effect nearly as well because of the need for Link Zones, and now it's just more effort than it's worth. But hey, at least the card left behind one hell of a legacy. That legacy will then be continued by a Link Monster. A bloody Link Monster. Well guys, that's going to conclude part 1 of my series reviewing every monster remotely related to the Sino Dragons. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to subscribe and let me know which Sino Dragon is your favourite and why down in the comment section below. Next time, we'll be covering the alternate Sino Dragons from the manga, the Dual Dragons, as well as the stupid Dual Link Dragon, so stay tuned for that. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.